In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a contour flange as an initial feature inside of the sheet metal environment. So I'm going to start a new sheet metal template here. Begin a new sketch. Select the plane I'd like to put it on. And I do have my origin selected already. Now let's talk a little bit about what I would want to create as a contour flange. Sometimes you want to create like a banded shape or kind of a an initial shape that kind of gets most of your sheet metal out of the way. You can use the contour flange to do that. So I'll show a couple different examples here. I begin with just creating a line coming off of this, going to the right. And I'll make this about an inch. And then I'll hold on my endpoint here and create an arc coming out that's tangent. All right, I'll go ahead and add a dimension to this. And I know the arc length here on this one. So I'll say my arc length on that is 0.625 inches. Now, this isn't fully constrained yet because I do have some ability to adjust this. I want to make sure this stays tangent, though. And it does. And for the height of this arc, let's make that 0.5. Now, from here, I can create a contour flange just from this line element. And this is a little different than maybe what you're accustomed to. Normally you might create a complete solid profile and use a closed profile in order to create your initial shape, much like we did with the face command. Here, all you need is initial line work. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this sketch and I'll begin my contour flange command. It's located up here in our ribbon. If you wanted to, you could also add it to this right click menu by customization if you use it a lot, but I'm pretty happy just grabbing it there. And this has a few more settings to it than the face command did. So here I do need to select my profile. The thickness has already been pre-selected by my sheet metal defaults here. It's actually pretty thick. We'll change that in a moment. Now I can specify how long I want this to be. I have a distance value down here in the bottom. So if you don't see that initially, make sure you choose these chevrons here to expand that. So you can actually specify how long you want this contour flange to go. I'm gonna make this go about 10 inches. The other thing you see down there is the ability to adjust which side it goes to. So I can have it go you know, in the positive Z direction based on my current plane or the negative Z direction, or I can have it split the difference. So it can go five inches each way. What you see up here on the profile for these directional icons is a little bit different. Let me go to a side view. You can see what it's doing. So initially we have this coming from one side for that profile, I could have flipped it to the other side. And you can see that makes a distinct difference in how the metal gets created based on that sketch. I could also say that this is the neutral axis down the middle. I could have this split right down the middle as well. Again, we do have controls up here for unfold and bending and corner options, which actually do make sense now because we do have kind of a rolled bend in here. So I could go to my unfold options and specify which K factor I want this to be. I can go to my bends and adjust my bend information, my corner information, but you'll see more of these utilized when we get to secondary contour flanges. For now, I'm pretty much just worried about the shape, making sure the directions are going the right way, making sure my width extents are correct. I'll say okay to that, and there's my initial contour flange. Now when I go up to my sheet metal defaults, I can change this over to my 10 gauge stainless. Say okay to that and adjust it for me. Let's say I want to make this a 12 gauge stainless and adjust that further. So you can see my metal automatically adjusting there. So that's one example. Let's do another one here, more of a kind of a band shape. I'm going to create another profile here. And I'm just going to create a circle really quick and easy. Make this about three and a half there. Now, in order for the contour flange to work on this, I do need to open up this profile. So what I'm gonna do is create a couple of lines here, and I'll go back and create these construction lines in a moment. I'll just toggle these over to construction using my format button up here. I'll just make it a little bit cleaner. I'll constrain these endpoints there, just to keep my sketch fully constrained. Put a dimension on these guys. The opening I want to have at the top there will be about 10 degrees. And I actually probably need 
one more construction line in there. Just do it this way. I'll make that vertical so it sticks straight up there. Make sure these endpoints are touching to the origin. Very good. Now I just have a little bit more freedom in this yet. So we do a symmetry between these two and this guy. All right. And I'll go ahead and trim out these elements up at the top. So from that, I can finish my sketch. And I'll begin my contour flange again. This time I'm using this open profile. You can see I get a nice open band there. I can adjust the direction that this goes here as well. And I can also adjust the value for how big this is going to be. I'll just make it two inches. I'll take the default. I'll say OK. And there's my banded shape. And this would flatten very easily now too. So I can go up here and choose create flat pattern. You see I get a nice flat shape based on that as well. One of the easiest ways to create that type of shape is with this contour flange command.